Hey everybody, Paul here, and today we're going to do something a little unusual. Usually, I'm messing with either the pickup truck or the vet, but my co-worker behind the camera there, he had a little problem where he's having some error codes get thrown. So we're going to take a look at this. It's going to be a little bit different than what we normally do. There's usually a lot of prep, uh, a lot of uh, research that we try to do to be as prepared as possible. This is going to be a little bit more uh, fly by the seat of our pants, so we're going to see if we can fix his problem. So what's going on, man? What happened? You broke down? Uh, <coughs> throw a bottle of assembly codes. Something. Something? So yeah. you threw a bunch of codes? Three of them. Three of them? Yeah. Well, Alright, well, why don't you tell everybody what's going on here? Basically, broke down on the side of the road and getting three different codes that all said the throttle body was bad and the engine went into fail-safe mode. And you've already replaced part of the throttle body once, right? Uh, a couple years ago, I, I don't remember it doing this fail-safe mode, but I had taken the time to pull the throttle body and clean it, and it was idling real bad, uh, and I replaced the throttle body motor, the, the throttle valve motor okay. at that time. How fast did it let you drive? About eight miles an hour. Ooh, no yeah. tickets that way, right? No. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of pissed off people behind me, though. All right, so I've never seen the inside of this truck, really. I mean, outside, I've seen the battery at once. So you guys are going to see me ask a bunch of dumb questions here, but that's what this channel is all about. All right, so, once you, all right, so we've got our air filter here. You've already kind of pointed that out to me previously. Where, where where am I looking here for the sensor? Uh, well, the sensor is actually this is the under this air intake. The throttle body is down there. Okay. The sensor, if you can see, is back in that area. Okay. Behind this vacuum line. Get this out of our way. Disconnect that guy there, and we'll disconnect it here too. We got. The sensor, which should be a. Can right, we push that up. down yeah. or up? Up. Oh, it's already up. Okay, so that, oh, there it goes. Oh, that helps. <laughs> I use the reflection of the sun. Cool. Well, we get your your voltmeter. We'll figure out which one's calculating resistance, and I see this. Let's we'll put a screwdriver in here and turn it. That's how he says to test it. All right, all right, all right. I, I can't do this to you guys. I cannot make you sit there and watch us learn how to test a throttle body sensor on the fly. We did detect resistance across the throttle body uh, sensor, and for all purposes, we came to the conclusion that it really wasn't the problem. I think it's a little bit more important that you guys see how to properly test this. I've come up with some good resources I want to share with you guys right now. You have Engineering Explained, and this guy, what he does is, is you'll see, he puts he puts it out on a whiteboard for you. He does a really good job of that. Kind of explain, walks you through the process of how these things work. You also have Scotty Kilmer, who's always good and very well established, and he's going to show you how it works on a manual throttle body. Our problem is not the throttle body sensor. We're going to skip ahead. We're going to start taking off the throttle body and continue troubleshooting his problem. something right there but that could have fallen in there not really sure what that is some kind of debris let's see how we pull it got throttle body cleaner that's how this started the last time this problem happened and i found out it was that damn motor i pulled the thing off and started cleaning you should have seen how spotless that throttle body was All right, so we pulled the throttle body with the throttle body motor off. Uh, we checked the sensor, uh, the absolute position sensor. It just seems fine. 
we took it up to the hardware store, they checked it, and uh, it doesn't seem to be the problem. So there's really not a lot of options. Now, Christian, you told me you changed this out. You changed this thing out a couple years back, and everything's kind of pointing to this guy being our culprit. So we bought the kit, and how much did the kit cost us? Or it cost you? $56. $56. So that's not actually a bad deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the old one out. We're going to put the new one in. We're going to do that right now. First thing we got to do is I have some instructions. Did you take the instructions? I took your instructions. All right, so we're winging it because, but first thing we got to do is take out these five screws. These two screws here appear because they're, they require a Phillips head. They appear to just kind of hold this piece on. So we're not worried about that. And if you think there was some kind of genius behind my, my di interpreting that, here's my example. <laughs> Do you notice it came with those two screws? <laughs> ah, see. Somewhere someone said, man, he's really smart for about 2.5 seconds there. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, we gotta keep the spring. Oh, that's pretty basic. That doesn't look bad. That's not bad at all. Alright, so that's I don't know what that looks like on the inside. So this is when we compare the two, it's pretty much the same. I mean you got a seal there. Uh, they got a little a little cover on this uh, little motor part. So nothing fancy. So we're gonna set that over here. It's probably gonna go out of shot out of shot, and that's fine. We're going to uh, we really don't need these screws anymore because the bag came with five brand new ones. Um, so it's pretty straightforward and simple. There's really not much to it. It's spring loaded. So if you there's a I don't know if you guys can see there's a little hole right here and that spring hooks into that hole. And there's your that's how you're getting your tension. It also came with some other pieces here. I believe this is for the uh, throttle body to remount back onto the truck. And uh, we have some couple of rubber seals here. And I believe once again, that's for the throttle body to mount back onto the truck. All right, took us a few minutes, but I think we've kind of gotten this figured out. So here's our, this is our idle position adjustment tool. As you can see here, the position, the position is actually setting the stop point. The kicker is this, this, this needs to have tension. The spring needs to have tension so that when it's opened, right? When it's pushed open, that it comes back. It's got to come back to close at a close position once you come off the gap. I'm just going to kind of push that. There it goes. It's actually, we could probably put a couple of these screws in just to hold this in place. And so I'm going to temporarily borrow two screws just to kind of put this in place. So we shake the table. All right, so I'm gonna turn this guy to tension it. And we're gonna, we're almost there. Counterclockwise. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, well, seeing as you have a problem with clockwise and counterclockwise, I was just checking. You're so mean to me. I've turned that now counterclockwise, as Christian likes to point out. Nice and shiny new screws. Last step, it was a major pain in the ass to pull this off, so instead of wasting a bunch of time and energy uh, trying to put it back on once we get the throttle body back on the truck, let's just do it now. Now let's go put it on. Let's go put it on. If we're going to go ahead and see if we can get this guy out of here. And uh, we're going to replace that. That just take a second. Looks like a tapeworm. All right, so we're gonna put this guy in here. 
Alright, so we're gonna set this guy right on top there. Well, we can test it because we're going to put the battery back on. So what's the verdict? No codes. No codes. Cleared. It's cleared. Let's check our app. Alright, automatic app. When last we read it, it said we had three codes. No problems. No problems detected as of 303 today. It checked it a minute ago, so. All right. Well, that wraps that up. You know, one of the cool things about this particular job is I had no prep for this. Christian called me, he was having a problem with this truck. We got together, and between the two of us, honestly, we kind of brainstormed the problem. Now. Ultimately, it ended up being uh, the motor that operates the, the throttle body. We swapped that out with a kit. It was a pretty straightforward fix. Anybody could really do that. It was about $50 in a few hours worth of work. And a lot of that time, honestly, real time on these fixes, that's like a, a half an hour, 45 minute fix. Uh, we're moving cameras around. We're doing all our thing. So that kind of adds to the process. But in the end, this is definitely something anybody could do. So I hope you found this video useful. Keep watching, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, all those other great social medias. And we'll see you next time. You're, it's, we're always talking about how to better serve you. Yeah, hear that, audience? We're always talking about you. <laughs> Are you really taking out an old screw to put a new one in yeah, its place? Why not? Because that's stupid as hell. No, it isn't. Just leave the damn screw in there. No. I oh my god, that's no, so. That's, I can't have it. Oh then you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna come back in in a year. I will have died from a heart attack by then. You will not remember us doing this, and you'll be like, "Why do I have old-looking screws and then newer old-looking screws?" I've done this exact process and couldn't tell you how to do this. So really. Oh. What the hell, man? Subscribe already!